James 4, 4 says, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy to God. James 4, 4. When people desire to be friends with the world, they automatically set themselves up to be uh, an enemy of God. And the reason for this is because the things of this world, they are not that which is in accordance with what God has both declared and revealed. Whatever the world desires is of the same nature as Lucifer. We know that there is the prince uh, of the uh, of the air. He's he's the quote unquote king of this world. Not that he's more powerful than God, but in the sense to give us an understanding that his pull of deception and temptation to each and every one of us is very strong. And unless we have the Holy Spirit within, we cannot fight against him, but we will want to go in the way of the world because people naturally want to be accepted. And those who desire to be accepted by the world, they don't stand up for anything. When something confusing begins to uh, come across, when uh, people try to evolve morality and they try to say that certain things that were not okay a hundred years ago, weren't even thought of 50 years ago, are now okay to do, people will give in to these certain things because they want acceptance. But their acceptance is in the wrong manifestation because whoever goes with the world automatically is on wrong terms and is an enemy of God. And we know that uh, anyone can become born again. And we become born again when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins. When this happens, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, comes to live within us and he guides and directs our paths. He gives us the strength to persevere. We know that we don't have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind when the Holy Spirit is residing within. He is the one that directs our paths and helps to give us the ability to walk in accordance to God's word. But those who desire to be of the world, those who flirt around with certain ideologies that are not based upon sound theology, those who want to go in the way of what they think should be or, or what they want to believe uh, and, and the way in which their emotions leads them rather than being led by what is logical and truthful, they are going to be those who are of the world and on that final day will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Now, God does not desire to damn anyone. He is, he is continually speaking to us both by his word, which we can, any of us has accessible. If we will just humble ourselves and go to the word, we can understand what God's word has to say and the path in which he is directing us to. Because anything that is of the world that is contrary to God always brings forth consequences. Anything that uh, directs people to fulfilling the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, anything that uh, leads man to flirt with that which is otherwise going to be regretted later on. All of that is not only contrary to God, but all of those things will forever have consequences, either in a short-term scale or a long-term scale, that uh, basically wounds us, it'll harm us, and it will lead to certain things that could have otherwise been prevented. And that is where a lot of depression and anxiety comes from. That's where a lot of, um, of pride and narcissism comes from. The things of this world are transitioning our spirits and seeking to control us in such a way where our spiritual senses become dimmed. We no longer understand that we are spiritual beings. Rather, we are led by the world and, and externals and that which is in the physical state around us. We're led by what we see. And we know that Ecclesiastes says, um, better is, the, uh, is the, uh, the fulfillment of the eyes being able to see than the want of desire, but both are vanity. A person may want something, and even if they do get that fulfillment, eventually it's going to be vanity if it is not from God and in accordance with the laws and and the way in which God has set things up to be. Because God's ways are perfect. They're meant for our good. He desires to bless us. He desires to help us. 
But if we're going to go in the way of the world, we are setting ourselves up to be an enemy of God because God specifically commands us to not go in the way of the world. We are, not, as, as Paul says in Romans, we are not to be uh, conformed into the image of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And our minds can forever drift and think about certain things, fantasize about things. Uh, it, can, it can lead us down paths uh, within our minds that would lead us to act out in a certain way that is wrong. Our mind is very powerful. And if it is not controlled by the Spirit of God and we are not submitting it and spending time in God's Word, what do we have to base our mind on? Just the metaphysical, uh, metaphysical realm of our own fantasies and thoughts and wants and desires? What sort of solid basis is that based upon? Because in the end, when we fulfill those things, we're going to just continue to seek more and more, and we're never going to be satisfied and fulfilled. And so that's why it's important that we do not go in the way of adulterous people who want to live for themselves in accordance to what they believe and what they want things to be. They are those who create, who attempt to create their own form of reality and their own form of truth, and it is not reality or truth by any means. But this is the spirit of our day and age. It's a spirit of confusion. We know that Satan uh, is the deceiver, and we know that even there is going to come a time, and it's happening already, where there are even people within the church who are being deceived because we know that uh, Paul had also declared that um, there's going to come a time where even, even if it were possible, the elect of God would be deceived. And this is coming from those who are in pulpits or in, in Christian communities who are claiming the name of Christ but do not have the Holy Spirit. And then what they say is, sh is sugar-coated with niceness and kindness. And inadvertently, through that, people lose their discernment and they begin to flirt with the idea that, oh, maybe this person is right, rather than going to the Word of God directly. So we need to make sure that we are not friends with the world. We, we need to be, obviously, we're going to be in the world, we live in the world, but we don't need to be of the world. We are to stand out. We are to stand against darkness. We are to be as, as the light in darkness. We're to have the Holy Ghost within shining throughout us showing others the fruit of the Spirit, we are commanded to differentiate ourselves uh, from the world and to distance ourselves from its enticements and its temptations and its lures. We are not to be conformed in the way in which the world declares, but to be transformed again by the renewing of our mind. And this is why we cannot be friends uh, with the world. We can be friends with other people. We can be friendly to unbelievers because we want all to come to the knowledge of Christ and to be saved through repentance and by the blood. But this can only happen when we are understanding that we are not going to press into the things of this world and what they say because we know that God takes what is foolish to the world to humble the proud and the wise of this age. He takes us who are born again, who we have no wisdom of our own, and he gives us his wisdom to be able to speak boldly and on the authoritative word and foundations of the word of God. So may we not be as adulterous people who are friends, friends with the world, uh, because those who desire and even wish to be friends with the world automatically are enemies of God.